Welcome to the Busy to Balance podcast. I am your host, Jamie Zwier. This podcast is all about how to show you, the overworked, overwhelmed, and occasionally unhealthy woman, how to find health and balance in all different areas of your life. I will share with you digestible, bite-sized bits of info on everything from balancing a healthy plate to keeping a healthy home and everything in between. Now listen, I know that you are busy and that is why I will keep these episodes short, sweet, and to the point. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I hope everyone had a great holiday and happy new year. I hope you're having a great first day to your new year. I'm really excited to be back with you and it's January and you know what that means. New year's resolutions mainly to get healthy. I hear, I hear from the grapevine. That's like a, um, a thing. <laughs> I know because that was me. I've set all the New Year's resolutions to get healthy, to be fit, to get skinny, just very basic, generic kind of resolutions that never really got anywhere because they were basic and generic and had no goal or plan. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to set a New Year's, New Year's resolution that will actually stick past. I have a statistics for you. It said 45% of Americans set a New Year's resolution to lose weight uh, or get in shape, but 80% fail by January. So we set these resolutions January 1st, and then they fail by February. Like, 30, 40 days later. So why is that? Why is 80% of us failing on our New Year's resolutions? Um, And I just feel like we are not, one, setting realistic goals, and two, not really having a plan for the goal. So that's what we're going to be chatting about today, how to really make a goal and stick to it. So if this happens to be you, one of these 80%, if you're one of the 20%, that's amazing. Good for you. It took me a long time to figure out how to stick to a goal and actually achieve it. I remember when I realized that I could, whatever it is that I was wishing for, I could actually achieve it if I, you know, worked diligently enough. I remember this moment distinctively. I was at a museum and I was with my niece and I was throwing a penny into the wishing well, right? And I feel like my wish is always the same. Like it was always the same. It was to, you know, have more money or to get really fit or I don't even know, just like, and I remember thinking like, why is this not actually achievable? Like I don't have to sit here, waste all my coins and throw it into every fountain that I see. It's actually achievable. If you have the work ethic, have the goals in place, like plan strategically enough. So That was really how this kind of started for me. So And we are going to nip that in the butt after today because our goals, our New Year's resolution goals are going to be goals that we actually achieve. And I hope that you've set your goal. Do you know what your goal is? Maybe some of you may be feeling so discouraged by setting previous goals that you're not even interested in setting them now. So set your goal, be clear on what it is, and then use these tips in this episode to really work backwards in achieving that goal. All right. So don't be afraid to get really big with your goal here. Um, I know it can be intimidating and you might feel like you're psyching yourself out by setting a large goal, but set it. And then even if it takes you more than a year, let's say it's a five-year goal, we will work to figure out what is realistic for this year. So don't be intimidated by your goal, write those big daring dreams down. So Let's say a goal is to get fit this year. 
So you're going to have to think to yourself, what is realistic for you to achieve for this year? If you have this image of like a huge bodybuilder or whatever it is that you have, that's okay. You know, set that goal, put it on your vision board. Maybe it is our five-year goal, or maybe you have more time than someone else and you could achieve that quicker than someone else. Either way, these are going to be open-ended questions where you're going to be answering for yourself. So what is achievable for you in one year? Is that to gain X amount of muscle? Is that to lose X amount of inches? What is realistic for you? What does each 90 days look like. You might just want to focus on 90 days. So from each quarter, so from now until March, January, February, March, then that's 90 days. Then you're going to focus on April, May, June. And then once it's June, July, August, September, and then October, November, December, this helps segment the year because thinking from now until December could be quite daunting and overwhelming. And you don't even know what what's going to be going on, you know, maybe in the fall or over the summer. So just set a 90 day goal and then adjust accordingly after each 90 days to make sure you're on track to hit your annual goal. So for example, a 90 day goal for someone who's looking to get fit might be to, you know, if you're looking overall at the year, you're going to definitely have to fine tune your nutrition You're also going to have to figure out what kind of schedule to get on in order to get yourself in the gym routinely. What does your schedule look like now and how can you adapt that to get into the gym X amount of days that you need to get into the gym in order to achieve your goal? Also, what workouts are you going to do in this 90 days? You might want to start small here and then build from there. So you're going to start with, you know, if you're not regularly a gym goer or work out that much, you're going to start with a very basic exercises here so you can get your strength up and not burn yourself out and over exhaust yourself or hurt yourself so you can't go the full year. Then from that point, you're going to look and see what each month looks like. So aside from the 90 days, what does January, February, and March have to look like? What are some things that you're doing each month to get yourself to achieve your annual goal? So that might mean January, you are looking at gyms, you're trying to find the best gym for you, you're trying to find workout classes that work for you, you're going to figure out what diet works best for you, Um, you're kind of doing the research, planning everything out, and starting to implement your routine slowly but surely. February may be adding an additional day to the gym, it may be fine-tuning your nutrition even more. March, so on and so forth. I think you get the idea here. After that, we are going to break it down by each week. What are each, what are you doing each week? Um, First, second, third, and fourth week each month. And then you're going to break it down by day. What are you doing each day to get yourself closer to your goal? And then, you know, really hour, minute, every single minute and hour is a choice. So even if you had one off day, one off lunch break, it's okay. Just get yourself back on track because when you look at the grand scheme of things, that one, you know, dinner where you didn't eat as healthy as you wanted to, or that one day that you skipped and, you know, you didn't stick to your plan, it's okay. Like it's not going to really throw you off track if you have this big goal in place, this big plan in place. So this is the exact process that I would work a client through to get them to, you know, really see their goal, their big picture goal, and then work on how it's actually achievable. And this is different for everyone. Everyone starts somewhere different and everyone has different things going on. Um, So your goals are not going to be the same as someone else's. You may be someone who's starting off eating fast food multiple times a week, or you may be someone else who just wants to, you know, fine tune their diet or get into the gym an extra day of the week or hasn't been in the gym a month. So we're all so different and this is going to be very tailored and unique to you. So do not compare yourself to anyone. You just want to look at where you are today and where you want to be a year from now and how that's going to be different compared to yourself from last year. I mean, that's the only thing you can compare yourself to is who you have been, who you were yesterday, who you were last year. And so that we're not making the same mistakes over and over again, the same getting stuck in the same traps over and over again. And I know over time after 
making and creating the same habits over and over again, we don't think that we can be any different. We just assume that we're just going to be messy people or unhealthy people or someone who just can't go to the gym or get to the gym on time or someone who's just not a morning person. And then we we tell ourselves that. That's our identity. You've conditioned yourself to think that way. So, you know, as time passes, as we grow into ourselves and grow in old age, we're just, that's just who we are. But you can change things about yourself. You can make a goal and set it and achieve it. You can do and be anything that you want. And trust me, I battle with this too all the time, but I know that deep inside. So when I feel my old self creeping in, I acknowledge her. I don't bash her or treat her unsympathetically. That's okay. Like she's part of me, but each day I grow and strive to be better than I was yesterday. So after you've went through your system and you've set your yearly goal, you broke it down by quarter, by month, by week and by day, you're going to add it to your calendar. And you're going to add, go grocery shopping on this day, get to the gym this day. Again, don't get crazy with the goals, especially during this first few months. Um, You want to set small achievable goals, ones that are reasonable. I mean, if you're not working out at all right now, uh, and you set a goal to work out five, six days a week, that is not likely to happen if you were not going to the gym at all. So why not set a goal for one day, two days? And then once you achieve that goal, you can be like, it creates confidence in yourself and then you can do more the following week or the following month. So start with small goals, put them in your calendar and stick to them. This is the trick. (laughs) you got to stick to the goal. If, if it's in your calendar, you got to stick to the plan. Um, just like you would any other appointment, a meeting with someone, a doctor's appointment, you want to stick to it just like you would that. Something that makes that part of it easier where you want to stick to it is by creating a why behind your goal. So if your goal is to get stronger at the gym or get fit or whatever it is you want, why? What is the reason behind wanting this goal? So that you can feel better in your clothes, so that you can feel more confident, so that you can have more energy, so that you can, what is it? Why? So think deep down and why you want to do it and be honest with yourself. Maybe you want to look a little more attractive for someone, or maybe, you know, just, just be honest with yourself and figure it out and make sure it's for the right reasons. And once you have that established, you create your why. So you're going to write it down. You're going to put it in different places that you remember, put it in, put, um, you know, an image that reminds you of your why on the background of your phone, maybe hang something on your refrigerator, put something in your purse, like on a notebook, whatever it is to remind yourself of it day in and day out. So when that alarm goes off or when you see in your calendar, get to the the gym today, you're going to be like, oh, great. But if you have your why in place, maybe when your alert goes off on your phone, it can say a little, like a little something extra that might like spark your memory and be like, oh, okay. Like that's exciting. If you want tips on like how to get into the gym and and easier tips on whatever it is, I have past episodes, past podcast episodes recorded on those things. So I will be sure to tag them or add them to the show notes so you can go back and listen to them to help you get back on track with whatever it is, eating well, getting more sleep, meal prepping. I got it all for you. So just to recap when you are setting your New Year's resolutions in order to create actual change this year and make this 2019 different from previous years, you're going to want to set a goal and then break your goal down annually, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and then add it to your calendar. Create your why behind wanting the goal. Create those feelings behind desiring this goal. How will you feel once you have this goal? What why do you want this goal? Write all that stuff down. It brings the fire out in you on those hard days. Also, don't beat yourself up too much. When you look at the grand scheme of things, a year is a long time. And if you have a bad 
an off day, an off meal, an off week, who cares? Give yourself a break. Give yourself some grace. This takes time. You did not get into unhealthy habits overnight. So why would you assume that you would be able to create healthy habits overnight? This takes time and practice. So please be kind to yourself. Also, I am here. I'm running a sale that I'm extending. I ran it for the month of December and I'm going to extend it for the first two weeks of January where my health coaching is $99 a month. And with that, it's two coaching sessions and then the additional resources that you can check out at ohowhealthy.com backslash health coaching. And over there, you can get the details. You can apply for the consult there to make sure you're a good fit for the program. And you know, if you're looking to really create change, real change, you're going to have to do something different this year, different than previous year. So let me know if you're interested in that. Go to the, the link will be in the show notes. You can apply for a consult over there. And let's make 2019 our best year, guys. All right. I will Catch you all next week. Bye.